Welcome back, this is the Tutor Wizard. This one's Ringo and this one's Alice, the new additions to the family. Please subscribe right here, hit the notification bell, and you'll get to see a whole lot more of these kitties. What we're doing today is try and focus on the board, not the kitties. I know it's hard, but they're monsters. I know, they're so cute. We're gonna do linear algebra one. Chapter one is systems of linear equations. What we're gonna try and do is discuss M equations and N unknowns and hold two cats at once. And then what we're gonna do specifically this lecture is we're gonna define what a linear M by N system is and then discuss what it means to be a, the general solution to such a system after I go put these cats back upstairs. Now what we're gonna do is start discussing what it means to give the general solution to a system of M linear equations and N unknowns. Right now what we want is just one equation in M unknowns and then we'll talk about a system of M of those equations. So what is one equation? Recall from the previous videos we have that variables are denoted x1 to xn. For simplicity, most of the time, if we have three or less, we'll use x, y, z. And then our constants are scalars, we're gonna call them consistently through this course. Scalars mean constant fixed real numbers. Vectors or other objects are bigger guys with more coordinates. Scalars just mean numbers. We're gonna denote those with two indices. You're gonna to see today finally why that is so. And for simplicity in equations, we may write a, b, c. A linear equation in N unknowns, just like previously in the previous video, is uh, an equation which is every term is a constant or a multiple of a single variable. So that means a multiple of a single variable is just a real number, a scalar, multiplied by one of my unknowns. There can't be two or anything like this. So this is the general form. We can group everything together. This is the general form of a linear equation, one linear equation in N unknowns. Otherwise, the equation is called nonlinear. This is the parasitic definition. The not case is nonlinear. Moreover, we might as well squish as much terminology in here all at once. Homogeneous means zero. The right-hand side is zero. So if B1 is zero, we call the equation homogeneous, and it will look like this. That means that we set the right-hand side equal to zero. Quite often the strategy is solving the homogeneous solution and then find, using that to find a clever way to solve the non-homogeneous scenario and that's why we focus on the homogeneous case because this is the easiest case. Once we have either one equation in N unknowns or a homogeneous equation in N unknowns, what we're going to do is what does it mean to be a solution to that? Let's remind ourselves quickly about that. And then when we have a system of M equations, the solution sounds like we're repeating ourselves but there's a subtle difference called simultaneously. Let's now look at M equations, which are all linear, which we're going to call a system of M equations in N unknowns. Okay, so now that we have one equation in N unknowns, for simplicity, often we're going to deal with two unknowns or three unknowns. Pedagogically, this will be easier to show you how to do all these moving parts. You're not going to want to do it for 15 unknowns, either and I probably don't want to. Well, I probably do. But at first, it's good to start with two and three, and then you can get larger from there, and the scenario never changes. One solution, no solution, infinitely many solutions. What is a solution? <laughs> a solution is any ordered n-tuple, there's a word for the day, n-tuple. Pair is what we call a two-tuple. <laughs> Triplet is what we call a three-tuple, but it's ordered, which means they have to go with the right coefficient. So the S1 has to go with the A11, and the S2 has to go with the A12. It can't be, you can't flip them around. That may not be a solution if you permute them, is what they're saying technically in there. So it's ordered pair, which makes the equation true. So if you can find a bunch of numbers, which when you put them in there in the correct order and with the right coefficients, you get the number B1. That's what we mean by making it true. So then that's a solution to this equation. And in all contexts, whether we're solving linear equations or nonlinear equations, or whether it's in linear algebra or any other mathematical class, I'm across the board, when we mean solve, we mean find all the solutions, not some of them, not most of them, all of them. That's a universally quantified predicate. So make sure you get them all. We're worried about it, so at first, so should you. That's, the, that's why. We're worried about it and we lose sleep at night, so you worry about getting all of them. Luckily, for linear systems of n equations and n unknowns, we have three cases, one solution, no solution, infinitely many, and we're gonna give a systematic method for deducing which case you have and then giving us explicitly the solution or saying that there are none. If we have, as a baby example, what do we mean by solution? If you take, and this is extremely useful terminology in some of the books, they start using tri the word trivial. So first of all, trivial solution means the zero solution. It's trivial because it doesn't really give us information. It works, of course, yes. And why does it work? Put the numbers in there. 
this number times zero is zero, plus this number times zero is zero, dot, 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 this number times zero. If I put zeros all in there, I do in fact get zero. So the trivial solution always solves a homogeneous equation. That's saying the zero solution always solves the equation where you have a bunch of variables equaling zero. That's always true and that's useful now. And what we're going to say in questions is say, can you find non-trivial solutions to this homogeneous system? And you're like, what? First of all, we're calling it homogeneous because this side is zero and we're going to have more equations. That's why we call it a system. Then what we're going to say is we always know and with a homogeneous system also, zero would solve all those equations. So zero is a solution to the system. And what we want is non-zero solutions to the system. And so with the way they phrase that horribly is say, find all non-trivial solutions to this homogeneous system. What? I'll recap in a couple of scenes when we get that scenario. But right now, it should be pointed out that the zero solution always solves a homogeneous equation or system, all of them simultaneously. Now let's look at a system of M equations in N unknowns. All right. Those little ones made such a ruckus, Noodles had to come down here and check it out. So he's going to go make sure that they are okay. Now what we're going to do is define a linear system, which we're going to call S for simplicity when we talk about it. That system is going to consi consist of M linear equations and N unknowns. Long story short, that's why I put the basket around it at first. We might be lazy and start taking those off and just calling it the inside is what our system is. But at first, technically, the system is a set of M equations in our N unknowns, X1 to Xn. And all the equations are linear, which means every one, the coefficients are going to change, and that's why we've double indexed. But all of the equations, every one in there is either a constant term or a multiple of a single variable, and then we have m equations. So we have, this is equation 1, this is equation 2, and then dot, 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 this is equation m. And then we're going to start manipulating those to try and solve and find what the solution to this is. But before we do that, we have to give the subtle difference between what a solution to a system is and what a solution to just a single equation is. This solution has to solve all of them at the same time or simultaneously, we're going to say. Before we do that, one other thing is quickly in there, we call a system homogeneous system if all of those guys are zeros. If all the right-hand sides of each equation is zero, that's what we're going to call. This is now a homogeneous linear system. And we call m by n the size of the system. And this one at first, all you're going to have to remember is equations or rows. And this is the number of variables. Now let's look at a solution to a system. And then you should be starting to ask yourself a question immediately. How do we find systematically all solutions or solve a linear system? Now that we have a system, this is horribly what we're going to call it every time. When I talk about an M by N linear system, that's hopefully what you flashes in your mind. That basket of all the equations, they're all linear. They're all either constants or a multiple of a single variable. We put the constant on the right hand side. Usually if those are all zeros, we call it homogeneous. That's the object system. Now what we want is what it means to have a solution or all the solutions to a linear system. That means, first of all, we remind you of the trivial solution to a system means that it solves all the equations and makes them all zero. And if we did have a homogeneous system, the zero solution or trivial solution is always a solution to a homogeneous system. And we try to systematically find all the non-trivial ones. In general, a solution, the other ones we want to find is of an m by n linear system is any ordered n tuple s1 to sn, which makes all m equations true simultaneously. And then what we mean by solving is to solve an n by n linear system, we mean find all solutions. Just like when we did this for one equation, it doesn't change when we want the solution to one equation or to a system of equations we want, whether they're linear or otherwise, it doesn't matter. When we say solve something, we mean find all the solutions. And we want to find, we're going to call that the general solution. And that general solution always has one solution, no solutions, or infinitely many solutions. In particular, here's the two cases of when we actually have solutions. This is called consistent or inconsistent. If you're consistent, what that's going to mean is you have at least one solution. And consistency is going to be comprised of having either infinitely many solutions or one solution. That's the only two scenarios you can have for consistent systems. If you're inconsistent, you have none. We don't have to write anything down. The reason I have this example too specifically is for our comment that it has to solve them all simultaneously. For this linear system, this is a one by two system, I'm going to start calling it now. It's one equation and two unknowns, so it's a one by two linear system. It has quickly infinitely many solutions because we can't narrow down both, so we move y to the other side and call y free. 
and then x depends on y, and every point on that line is a uh, solution to this equation. You pick a point arbitrarily, even pick one that scares you, you can pick pi in your free time, or pick e, any number, if you pick that, you will get exactly four either way. In our case, let's pick t equals one for simplicity. That means when I put the t in here, I'm gonna get four minus one is three, and y equals t, which is one. So I get an ordered pair, which I claim is a solution. Check it, it is. X is three, Y is one, and I do get four. So there's infinitely many solutions. Pick pi. What happens when I do pi? Well, that says that he's four minus pi, and he's pi, and guess what? When I add those in there, I'm still going to get, this is four minus pi plus pi, cancel, cancel, which is oh, four, check. They all work. You can put any real number in there, it will solve it. Any point on that line will be a solution to our system. Now though, try and pick that one. Oh, that's a hot mess, go back to the first one. <laughs> pick one, and then so we have three and one, and try and do it for this system. This is not a solution to this system. First of all, I found it, and you can look at the previous videos, and I showed why this is the unique solution. But for now, what I notice is in the first equation, it does solve it. Three plus one is four. But in the second equation, I get three minus one is two, which is not equal to three. So it didn't solve both equations, it's only solved one. So three one is not a solution to this system. But if you check out this unique solution, I would have seven over two plus one half is four, check. And then if I put it in the second equation, seven over two minus one half is in fact three. It solved both equations simultaneously. And that's what a solution is. This is a solution to this one, but not to this system. This is the unique solution to this system. Now let's talk about how to systematically solve systems and find the general solution. All right, to finish off this video in this section, what we're gonna do is do what you should have asked yourself along the way and when you're training to be a good mathematician, as soon as someone else mathematical gave you a whole bunch of, this is the object we're talking about, this is what it means to solve that horrible system, and then nowhere in there that they talk about doing that, you should be asking yourself what this now forces you to do. Solve this two by two system, here it is. I gave you the solution in the last scene, it doesn't matter what the solution is. What I wanna know is how does you use a systematic algorithm, which we're gonna call Gaussian Jordan elimination to reduce row echelon form, <laughs> to deduce whether we have one solution, no solution, or infinitely many solutions. How do we do that? So I just throw it at you, solve this two by two linear system, which means I have two equations and two unknowns, x and y. We're gonna now start labeling so we can keep track, and we're going to start doing the same thing they told you, the mantras all the way through junior high and high school. What you do to one side of an equation, you have to do to the other side of an equation. So what you're allowed to do, long story short, and which was gonna be comprising the entire next video and section, is three row operations or equation operations you're allowed to use to manipulate this and not change the information or the system in any way, and then I can get the answer or the solution that we're looking for and all of them. The first thing we're gonna do is I'm allowed to manipulate and replace this equation by adding it to another equation or subtracting. So what I'm gonna do is, the first move we're gonna do to change our system is we're gonna take equation two and we're gonna replace it with equation two minus equation one. And now what you can do in your head is, what I'm doing is subtracting each spot. That's going to now give me a new system. That new system is going to be x plus y equals four. I'm not changing equation one. I'm replacing equation two with something, with this move, cleverly. What is that gonna be? X minus X is zero. Negative Y minus Y is negative two Y equals three minus four is negative one. And this is why we're gonna call it elimination. Gaussian comes from Carl Friedrich Gauss, who was born in 1777 and died in 1855. He's the prince of mathematics. You'll find out along the way who he is in this course specifically. He's gonna come up more than once, but right now, Gaussian elimination is Carl Friedrich Gauss. Elimination comes from right now. We just did one operation and I've now eliminated variable x from the second equation. What that gives me now is we're back at video two in this series, one equation and one unknown. I now have one equation and one unknown. I solve by, as long as that's not zero, I divide and what's our answer? Negative one over negative two or one half. I already know what y is. So by doing that one move, I've manipulated my system 
and it hasn't changed the information in any way. And I now can almost read off what the solution is going to be. Once I know this is one half, I can put it in there and I have one equation in just X and then I can solve and we're done. And then you will get, just like in the previous scene, Y is one half and X is seven halves. Let's do a couple more moves to show you how we're going to systematically do this in general. From this, I'm like, well, I still didn't see that. So I, don't, I want Y by itself. So in here, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to replace equation two with negative one half times equation two. This, I'm going to take equation two and I'm going to multiply both sides of that equation by negative one half. What you do to one side of the equation, you can do the other. So I can multiply both sides by negative one half. I'm solving for Y essentially is what they're saying, but keeping track of it in the system. Now what does that give me? That gives me a third equivalent system, we're going to call it x plus y equals 4. And then I'm going to get, I don't have to write the 0 anymore because 0 plus something is something. So then I get y equals 1 half. What I've really done is taken this and multiplied by negative 1 half, which is going to give me y equals 1 half. So now you can see explicitly by doing two moves, which we're allowed to do in manipulating these equations a little bit, we have to get our hands dirty. We can't just let it sit there. We have to do something to it. So I'm going to show you what we do. Once we start doing these manipulations, I can now just read off what Y is. You're like, well, he's a little bit hard X. How am I going to find X? You're going to have to put that in there. And I don't want to back substitute. Let's do one more move and then you can just read off what the answer is. What I'm going to do now is, and this is the weird ones. At first, I'm not going to train you to do this last move, but I'll do it for, so you can see the whole process. I want to get rid of y in this equation. So I can subtract. If I do y minus y, I would get 0. So now what I'm going to do is manipulate equation 1 and replace it with equation 1 minus equation 2. What does that give me? Now that gives me x minus 0 is still x. y minus y is 0 equals 4 minus 1 half is 7 over 2. And then this equation didn't change. And because zero leaves it alone. You can see, I can now just read off. It just tells me what the answer is. X is seven halves and Y is one half. This is what we're gonna call row echelon form. Row echelon form, there's more than one up to dividing by the constant. These are row echelon forms in the next videos. And this is gonna be reduced row echelon form. And in reduced row echelon form, you can either tell whether there's a unique solution, infinitely many solutions, or no solution. And that's what we're gonna do next time. Please subscribe right here, hit the notification bell. I'll see you in the next video.